We are reading, of course, from the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version commonly called. Please, get your copy of the authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in the authorized version of the scriptures. 1 Corinthians. Too serious? Too serious? Is it possible to be too serious about the Word of God? Hmm. Please follow me along in the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Please follow me along, word for word, verse by verse. Check me out. Check me out. Follow me along. Make sure that I'm not skipping a groove. Make sure I'm telling you the truth, I'm not lying to you. When you come to a part of scripture that you have a question about, you know what you do? Pause the video and read the entire context or the entire chapter. Do what you got to do. Follow me along. It's very important that you do that. Don't just sit there. Get your copy of the scriptures and follow along. Read with me. Okay? Check me out. Please do that. Please be a true Berean and search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Don't just say that because it, so it sounds good. Actually do it. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 10 on to verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, because of flesh, that doesn't happen today. It was not happening perfectly in the time of Paul within the Corinthian church, the body of believers, not a building. But there were divisions, there were contentions, as there is today amongst the church of the living God, amongst the true body of Christ. It is unfortunate. We all don't get along. We all don't agree. It would be nice if we did, but we don't. And unfortunately, that's not going to happen. But what Catholicism has done, and what heretics have done, as you know, because Catholicism preaching, we all, you know, all get together. Ecumenicalism. There are many paths to, uh, uh, to God, right? No, no. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? There's only one way. That's an exclusive statement by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. There are those of us who truly do believe on our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who truly adhere to the authorized version of the Scriptures, who believe, believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, who believe in the redemption of the purchased possession who rightly divide the word of truth but yet we still can't get along and why is that it's always 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 every single time or excuse me <laughs> flesh it's always fleshly things always fleshly things that get in the way every single time brother every single time the reason why I don't get along with certain King James Bible believing Christians, I think they're heretic idolaters. Why they don't get along with me is because they they say that I'm a heretic who preaches against liberty, which is not true. <laughs> but unfortunately, flesh is what gets in the way every single time. Every single time. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. 
You look at the disagreement, the sharp contention between Paul and Barnabas. What got in the way? Flesh. Flesh. That's what got in the way. So unfortunately, we're not all going to get along. And for those of us of the Church of the Living God who do not get along with each other, that doesn't cost us our salvation or anything like that. No, but it does hurt. It hurts the body of Christ. But then again, because of our flesh, we're not going to get along. Hence, it is. And hence, hit pieces, attack video. Brad, you're doing that. You've done that recently against devils who don't take the Word of God seriously, who have no standard but their own mind, their own selves, like David Wood. Okay? But see, you and I, as the Church of the Living God, we have the perfect standard, the authorized version of the Scriptures. But unfortunately, we all don't get along. And unfortunately, even though we of the church of the living God have and believe that we have one standard. Unfortunately, we all have differing views. And while a lot of us do speak and teach the same things, stupid things get in the way. Fleshly things get in the way. You'll see the thumbnail and you'll know what I'm talking about. Note the Catholic one on the thumbnail too. Note that. Note what's in the background. And I'll, I'll leave that alone. Well, let's continue. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith. <laughs> I'm going to prove a point, Lord, so excuse me. <laughs> I am of Breaker and I of Kim and I of Denlinger and I of Christ. <laughs> Is Christ divided? Was Denlinger crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Ruckman? Excuse me. That, that stings you a little bit, doesn't it? Good. 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 Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. This Christ divided. Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Wisdom of words. You see a lot of this in those Calvinists. You see a lot of that because, see, they get one of those, something like that. That's, that's something with the Constitution. But you get these guys who get that, again, that $100,000 piece of paper on their wall, and they learn technical words and then they start using all these high sounding technical words to try to explain what God has said. Hence, <laughs> not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. I'm telling you, you, you listen to some of these Calvinist preachers, uh, you listen to them, some of the wording and how they um, and how they present what they um, what they want to present. It's like you need a PhD to follow along with these people. And the the constant 
reminder that they are educated by Jesuits, and you're not. And what has happened today? Which has happened since the times of Scripture? That because, see what happens is, there are people out there who take the Word of God seriously and those who don't. There are those though out there who want to believe in God. But yet when it comes to that thing of Scripture, because for whatever reason, because it cuts them. Or they just say, you know, I'm not learned enough. Well, if you were to get saved and the Holy Ghost were in you, he would lead you and guide you into all truth, right? But see, a lot of Christianity is based upon feeling. It's all based upon feeling. And because of that, because it's, uh, it's based on feeling, or whatever it is, people who want to serve God, yet don't want to go to the perfect written standard, but yet will put their trust and faith in someone who has a hundred thousand dollar piece of paper on their wall. Hence, what happens? They put their faith in men, in man, in man's teaching, in man's preaching. Hence, you become Calvinists. You become Lutherans. You become Southern Baptists. You become Catholic. You become an Ite. Campbellite. Ruckmanite. And yes, Denlamerite. When man is the centerpiece. And that breaks off into a bunch of sex. S-E-C-T. I know that blasted closed caption thing is going to mess that up purposely. But sex. S-E-C-T. A bunch of sex. Is Christ divided? Apparently he is to today's standard, isn't he? Isn't he? And why is that? Why is that? Because either men take the Word of God seriously, or they do not. But what about this thing about too seriously? Which leads into these devilish sects. You know the word cult, by the way? Find me the word cult in the authorized version of the Scriptures. You're not going to find it. The word cult is not in the authorized version of the Scriptures. The word cult, by the way, does not appear in Webster's 1828 dictionary. Uh, where it would, between culprit and culture, it does not appear. What about this word cult? Hmm. Cult in English apparently first made its first appearance in 1617, and it's derived from the French word culte, C-U-L-T-E, which means worship. Hmm. And that word culte, or culte, whatever you want to call it, uh, which in turn is originated from the Latin cultus. Latin. Ooh. Yes, one of the seven language purifications that the Word of God went through. Yes. Yes. But the devil has chosen the Latin language. And the Latin cultus means to care, cultiva cultivation, worship. Mm. And the meaning devotion to a person, place, or thing apparently is from 1829. Apparently. Apparently. This, just put cult in in your Google search and away you'll go. Okay? But the point is, cult is not found in the authorized version of the scripture. Sect is... S-E-C-T. And you want to know something really interesting? Guess how many times the word sect appears in the authorized version of the scripture? Go ahead. Come on, guess. Five. Five times. Five the number of death. 
And of course, uh, and it, it all appears in the book of Acts. Isn't that something? Isn't that something, huh? And of course, one is mentioned, and you, you can do this yourself, uh, the sect of the Sadducees, the sect of the Pharisees, of course, the sect of the Nazarenes, which is mentioned in Scripture. Okay? So there's a bunch of sects out there. S-E-C-T-S. -E that, that blasted Google thing, oh, which you're going to watch that with the closed caption, they're going to mess that up. Okay? <laughs> All right? But there are a lot of sects out there. A lot of them. And a majority of them stem from Satan, Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots, abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism, which is the ultimate cult of all time. Okay? The ultimate sect of the devil is Roman Catholicism. Another sect of the devil is Calvinism. And you can go ahead and uh, mark uh, Lutheranism, which is Catholic light. And a lot of the Baptists, like uh, in that thumbnail, that that one on that would be on your right side if you're looking at it, uh, those are the new IFB, new independent fundamental Baptists. Okay? And what's interesting about these people is, about the uh, NIFB, they are staunch King James only. They are staunch, King James only. They will read from the authorized version of the scriptures. They will defend the authorized version of the scriptures. But see, the problem is <laughs> they don't rightly divide the word of truth. Christians are going through the time of Jacob's trouble. <laughs> and Mr. Anderson and his little cult, excuse me, uh, sect of the devil, um, then they teach that Christ paid for your sins in hell. So see, this idea of these sects of the devil, which have a base, they base what they do off of what is true. But then they go into a whole other crazy direction. And hence, when they do that, what do lost people say? Oh, you're, you're, you're taking the word of God too seriously. You're in a cult. Because of devils who are basing things off of what is true, but twisting them according to fleshly things, according to the teaching of man. Hence, according to the teachings of the devil, such as Catholicism. Because guess what? The thing about Catholicism... They get a few things right. Brett. Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Did he not? Catholics profess that. Yes. 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 You have to be born again, becoming a new creature in Christ Jesus. Catholics, oh boy, they talk about being born again. See, that's something they mess up. They, they bring in uh, Acts 2.38. Or, excuse me, Mark chapter uh, 16. Okay, that's where they say you got to be baptized in water. Which, of course, the uh, Charismatics, another um, sect of the devil, okay? Another sect of the devil, the Charismatics, okay? And I'm going to go as far as to say Pentecostals. Why? Because you, you don't rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? But, Catholics will profess about being a new creature, being born again. They do. They do. Okay? Catholics also will profess a six-day creation. Yes, they will. <laughs> Even though there is documented proof with some of their popes uh, giving credence onto evolution. <laughs> the Catholics. But see, there are some things that Catholics will say that are true. Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 
got to be born again. Yes, God created the earth in six days. Yes. Yes. But then again, what about Catholics? They add a whole bunch of other stuff that is loosely based on Scripture, loosely based off of things uh, within the Old Testament. Uh, of course, Catholics do not rightly divide the word of truth. Hence, hence, making a mockery out of the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. So, what Catholicism does, which is the mother of all abominations of the earth, they add a whole bunch of other things, some loosely based on scripture, but for other dispensations. See, again, dear friend, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. And if you took the word of God seriously, you would rightly divide the word of truth. And so many of these problems would clear up for you just like that if you would simply rightly divide the word of truth as guided by the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Comforter, who is the Holy Ghost, he will lead you and guide you into all truth, and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? But a lot of the heresy that we have today, these sects of the devil, that worship the devil, that worship man, and what he thinks, and try to purport a faith which is dictated by the precepts of men. That's of the devil. That's of the devil. Well, you might say, well, Paul is a preacher, and, you know, Brad, you're, you're doing the same thing. You're preaching, right? Well, yes. But see, I have a perfect standard. standard. And here, you search these things out for yourself. Okay? Here, come here. Come to this. The authorized version of the script. Let him guide you. Now God uses man, absolutely. But see, man, to suit his own to suit his own purpose, will take what God has said and tweak it and twist it, and hence create a sect of the devil. And hence, when lost people see that, it's like. You're taking the word of God way too serious when you're, you know, crawling around on concrete on your bare knees, kissing the feet of statues, worshiping a building, the Sunday worship thing, you know, the Christian Sabbath, which the uh, Calvinism, Calvinism, the institutes of the Christian religion. Have you ever read any of that? You you talk about you talk about a sect of the devil. Turn to your authorized version of the scriptures. First Kings chapter twelve. Now this is not where this begins, but this is a really good example of what we are talking about. First Corinthians chapter twelve. First Corinthians chapter twelve. We want verses. 25 on to the close of the chapter. Now, back story. This is now the divided kingdom. Okay? The kingdom of Israel was united under two kings. David and Solomon. Okay? You can argue with Saul. You can make an argument, but no, 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 no. The two recognized kings that Israel was completely united under was David and Solomon, and the third and final that it will be united under is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Son of David, King of the Jews. Okay? That's to come later. But this is the divided kingdom. Okay? And this is talking about Jeroboam. Now, Rehoboam was the son of Solomon. And Jeroboam, who represented the people whom Solomon uh, kept in heavy bondage, they come to Rehoboam. It's like, hey, your father made uh, servitude really heavy. Lighten, us for, lighten it for us, okay? And we'll serve you. And you can read this on your own time. I'm giving you the backstory, okay? So Rehoboam first takes counsel with the old men that were with his father. And they, they guided him rightly. It's like, hey, you know, 
take it easy on these people, make their servitude a little lighter, and they'll serve you forever. But Rehoboam, what does he do? Goes to the people he, his, his, his entourage, his clique, the people he grew up with, and they're like, hey, man, hey, 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 you know, your, your little finger will be thicker than your father's loins. Okay, my father chastised you with whips. I'm going to chastise you with scorpion. I'm going to one-up you. And see, that was a judgment against Israel, against Rehoboam, because of what Solomon had done, going after other gods. And because Rehoboam hark, uh, didn't hearken unto the counsel of the old men, but hearkened unto the counsel of the young men, what happened? So the kingdom gets divided. Two tribes would uh, stay with David. It was uh, Judah and Benjamin. And the rest, the northern. So northern and southern. And the southern kingdom, where Jerusalem was, where God put his name to worship in that dispensation. Okay? And the dispensation under the law, they had the temple and that kind of stuff. And they were to go, whether they were of the northern kingdom or not, they were to go to Jerusalem. Okay? Okay? You know, for the Feast of the Lord and that kind of stuff. All right? But Jeroboam, Jeroboam had a, had a problem with that. Hence, back story. Let's read. 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 25 on to verse 33. Follow me along. Come on. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in Mount Ephraim and dwelt therein and went out from thence and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, where the Lord, for the dispensation under the law, sanctified that, yeah, that's where they were supposed to go to. For, you know, the Feast of the Lords and... Feast of the Lord, excuse me, uh, and for the Feast of Tabernacles and stuff like that. They were supposed to go to Jerusalem. God ordained that. Okay? Then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me, and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Now, for all intentional purposes, that sounds logical, right? But God was casting judgment on Israel because of what Solomon done had done and how he made the people to sin by going after these idols and stuff like that. Okay, It was a form of judgment. So that means that it wouldn't be as uh, Mr. Jeroboam initially thought. Why? Because God is, was executing judgment. Okay, The two kingdom thing was a judgment on Israel. Okay, But let's continue. Whereupon the king took counsel. Where did he take his counsel from? I wonder. Not from God. Not from godly people. And made two calves of gold. And said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold, thy gods, plural. That sounds very familiar. Like what is in Exodus chapter 32 with, you know, Aaron the priest. These be thy gods. Gods, little g. Mm. Mm. Gods, little g. Mm. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Oh boy. Okay. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. And, then, and this thing became a sin. For the people went to worship before the one even on to Dan. And he made an house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people which were not of the sons of Levi. During this dispensation, priests were to be of the tribe of Levi. But see, see what we have going on here? We see an anti happening, a counterfeit and a replacement against the true God, but also replacing. We already see anti right here. God in Scripture said, under the dispensation of the law, there are certain things you got to go to Jerusalem for. 
No. If so, you know, go to Jerusalem. He ordained that within Scripture. Jeroboam, because of a little fear of his, and took counsel, not of God, makes a counterfeit. Okay? And then, he makes, in verse 31, and he made an house of high places, and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. God ordained the tribe of Levi. Most heretics, especially the Judaizers like Mark the Mess, even they know that. Okay, But here, Jeroboam perverted that. Anybody who wanted to be a priest, anybody who thinks that their God has called them to preach, oh, go to a Jesuit-trained cemetery school, pay upwards to $100,000, get a piece of paper that says, Jesuits say I can do this, you're a preacher. <laughs> yeah. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah, and he offered upon the altar. So a counterfeit day. A counterfeit of the actual scriptural holy day oh is there any sect of the devil out there that does that that counterfeits actual scriptural holy days <laughs> so did he in Bethel sacrificing unto the calves that he had made and he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. So you see a form of religion based off of something that was true. Okay, because under this dispensation, God ordained Jerusalem as a place to go and worship uh, for this, the feasts and stuff like that. Yom Kippur, that kind of stuff. God ordained the tribe of Levi. Okay? What did Jeroboam do? Okay, what did he do? Okay, he, he, he made calves and said it's either here or there. Two places where our Lord said one, Jerusalem. Our Lord said the tribe of Levi under the dispensation of the law. Jeroboam said, hey, anybody want, want you want, hey, come on. Based off of something what was true, but oh, perverted it, you see? See, that's what it is. That's what heresy and perversion is. Okay? The analogy. Rat poison is 95% good food. It's that 5% that'll kill you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Okay? You get what we're, get what we're saying here? Okay? Let's continue. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel, the 15th day of the 8th month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart. There are certain months, scripturally, which God ordained as holy days. Holy days. What does Satan do with his main church, his main sect, Catholicism? What has he done? I'll let you figure that out yourself. And ordained a feast unto the children of Israel, and he offered upon the altar and burnt incense. And this what Jeroboam did, Jeroboam the son of Nebat, was a stigma branded upon the children of Israel that they would be punished for the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, how he made Israel to sin. And see, in doing that, hey, you can ordain to yourself anything you want. Like Catholicism does. You read that stupid catechism of theirs, which is the Bible unto the Catholic, okay? Let, let me show you something. Let me show you something, okay? Let me show you something, okay? Let me show you. Okay? Let me show you this. 
Let me show you some of the stuff. <laughs> Let me show you some of the stuff. What I'm talking about. This And this kind of stuff, when people who are not of the Church of the Living God, lost people, and people of other sects see, and they say, you... You, you, you're crazy. You're, you're doing all this stuff. You're taking the word of God seriously. Where does that derive from? From the sex of the devil that add on to the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Things that were usually pertain unto another dispensation. But things that glorify man and flesh. Like you got this. The Book of Common Prayer. For the Church of Eng from the Church of England, okay. This one actually came from New York Oxford University, okay. This is uh, an original run of the, uh, not you know not way back and when, but uh, this is a very old copy of the Book of Common Prayer, okay. A lot of scripture in here from the Revised Version, of course, right? Yeah. This is man. Want to see another one? The Heldeberg Catechism. This is Calvinism. <laughs> Which purports about the one Catholic faith. This is, this is Calvinistic. Okay? That's man. Oh, you ready? The Baptist Confession of Faith. 1689. You want to know something? This is Calvinistic. You also have the Westminster Confession of Fiat, which the late great Eon Paisley was a part of, the, okay? Presbyterian. But see, the Westminster Confession of Fiat. This is of man. And of course! <laughs> yeah. Yikhail! <laughs> Luther's small and large catechism. This does not differ that much from this. There are slight differences, yes, but they're basically the same thing. They basically are. Of course, uh, your man Luther, who I do not think was a saved man. Hey, hey, you know what? If we, when we get up there and we see Martin Luther in heaven, uh, serve me up, Lord, the biggest serving of crow that I can eat and douse it with the biggest dousing of humble pie. And I'll eat every bit of it and I'll enjoy it. And I'll ask for seconds. I don't think Martin Luther was a saved man. You gotta remember, God used an ass to forbid the madness of the prophet. God uh, used Joab to rebuke David. Okay? But see, brethren, people, see all this? This is man. This is man. Now, read the Westminster Confession of Faith, but it's Trinitarian. The Baptist Confession of Faith, Calvinistic and also Trinitarian. <laughs> Elderberg, same thing. Common Prayer, same thing. And of course, we have. Uh, Mr. Martin, Martin, and you got Satan's church outright. These are of men. That is man. That is man. Okay. Also, we could, you know, like the, the religion of Joel Osteen, the secret. And see, people who want to know God or want to follow God, but yet. They just don't want to go to the scriptures themselves. And because of this thing on education, education, drilled on us by the Jesuits, the esoteric and the exoteric mentality, the, you know, the elitist, 
was the common people. Oh, you mean Nicolaitans, those who rule over the laity. And because of that mentality driven upon us by Catholicism. And I've talked with Catholics before who, you know, said, well, I, I enjoy the structure of the Catholic Church. And that on a Sunday, if you go to one Catholic church and another Catholic church, they basically have the same structure. I've heard that from Catholics before. Same with Baptists. And these non-denominational twits? <laughs> yeah, anything will go. Any, they, you know, we're non-denominational, which is a, a denomination in themselves. But yet, you come to them with the truth of Scripture, <laughs> That's when they turn on the... That's when they start showing the true love that they have. And see, because of this mentality, the esoteric and the exoteric, you know, the Nicolaitan mentality, which our Lord hates. And then you got people wanting to join themselves to a denomination, to become a Baptist, to become a Presbyterian, a Methodist. And, you know, I don't even have the, the Methodist uh, book, a book of man, trying to dictate to you how to follow God when you have the scriptures yourself. And if you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you have the Lord within you, and he will lead you and guide you into all truth, because the Lord is that spirit. And who is that? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? But now, let's go to Acts chapter 23. Acts chapter 23. Acts chapter 23. Verses 1 on to verse 9. This is Paul giving a defense of himself. Okay? Because you have here in Acts chapter, what is that, uh, 22, where he gives his defense and then he's taken away. Less, because uh, it's in Acts chapter 22 where he says that the Lord sent me on to the Gentiles and his people, the Jews, they gave audience to him up to that point and then they're like, away with such a fellow! So Acts chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 9. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth, then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whitehead wall. For the, sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? And they that stood by said, Refilest thou God's high priest? Then said Paul, I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest. For it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees, and the other Pharisees. There's two of the sects that are mentioned in Scripture. Okay? He cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee, of the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am called in question. And when he had so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisee and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. Now pay attention to this. Okay, For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit. The Unitarians of today. Some of, what is it, the, uh, of Judaism. There is the ultra-Orthodox, like the Hasidim. You have the conservative, and the, uh, there's a third um, liberal uh, branch of Judaism, um, which teaches, you know, the morality of scripture but deny all the supernatural th Thomas Jefferson the Jefferson Bible oh he liked all the things on morality and doing good but when it came to the miraculous Thomas Jefferson had a really big problem with that Thomas Paine common sense which in itself was well, whatever, if you want, if you've ever read it. But he denied the miraculous. So, today, how, ma how many people go to religion 
just to learn how to do good, how to make their life better, okay? But yet deny the miraculous. But there are those who do not deny the miraculous. Check this out, okay? For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit. But because the, the, the Bible has some good stuff in it, Good stuff, to, good stuff that we ought to live by. Hey, uh, the resurrection of the dead, Lord walking on water, uh, bringing people back to life. Ah, no, nah, that's, that's fairy tale. But the Bible does have some good things. So trying to divorce the miraculous <laughs> from the miraculous nature of Scripture. Boop. And seeking to do things out of their own flesh. Hence, unto the lost. And to those who question the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. It's like, you're taking things way too seriously. Look at what you're doing. You're doing this on every second Tuesday of the month while uh, jumping on one foot? Or you're doing uh, this worship, this mandatory worship and sun on Sundays in the church buildings, which the Baptists take and like I said, God give His Holiness the credit for uh, about my, They get that from Catholicism, the Baptists, mandatory Sunday worship. They get that from that from these guys. Okay, they do, they do. Okay, they do. And then the lost, the atheists, they see all that stuff about these poor people, these Christians following. <laughs> the precepts of men and then they come around and then they say well you're one of those Christian extremists <laughs> see how it works for the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection nor angel nor spirit but the Pharisees they confess both now check this out and there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees' part arose, and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man. But if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. So the Pharisees, yes, they profess both. Angel, spirit, and we just saw it right there. But yet there was a problem with that. What was that problem? Go to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. What was their problem? Acts chapter 5. We're going to be doing a little reading here. Verses 29 on to verse 40. Okay. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. See, the Pharisees, while they confessed both angel and spirit, they, they believed in the miraculous, but yet when the, the Father was standing right in front of them, they didn't believe it. Go figure that. Why? Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. One of the, one of the biggest subtle attacks on Scripture that you get from atheists and Christians and, and, and even some of the uh, Muslim people and stuff like and the Hindus and the Buddhists. The Bible was written by men. You know what? You're right. The Bibles were written by men. You are absolutely right. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. The Bibles were written by men. Yes, they were. Bravo, bravo. The scriptures are given by inspiration of God. See why I'm all about distinction? Oh, Brad, it says Bible on there. Find that for me in the scriptures. Oh, Brad, you're making a big deal out of uh, something that you shouldn't. Am I? Am I? Am I? Catholics are Christians. Lutheran and Catholic light. They're Christians. Presbyterians are Christians. Baptists are Christians. Calvinists are Christians. 
Church of England, they're Christians. And here's their books to tell you how you ought to worship God and serve God. Don't kid me, man. Don't kid me. What are you talking about? Huh? Give me a break. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. We are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart, like you would see in Acts chapter 7, when they were cut to the heart. And what does happen? According to Scripture. See, the people in Acts chapter 2, they were pricked. And they're like, men and bread, whoa! Whoa, what happens when you prick your finger? A uh, little blood comes out. What happens when you get a cut? You bleed like a stuck pig. Right? Right? There's a difference. So these guys were cut to the heart. In Acts chapter 7, they were cut to the heart when uh, Stephen, you know, laid out, down a really good sermon on them and then, you know, cut them to the heart. It's like, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in ears and hearts. He was a little aggressive. And what did they do? They gnashed on him with the, their teeth, stopped their ears, and they killed him. But when they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law. Ooh, someone who had the credentials. There's a reason why God has chosen the foolish things of this world. Which, uh, dear brother, in the previous video, like many had said, placed, put one of the best comments and I agree to this, that I have seen lately in any comment section. Absolutely. One of, like, boom, I couldn't say better myself. But, then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space, and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed, to yourselves that ye what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves who were slain, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. Now we see a mention to the Maccabean revolt in Scripture. You don't see the word Maccabean or Maccabees within the text of Scripture. You do see that within the Apocrypha, which is not inspired Scripture. But within Scripture itself, here is the only mention of what is known as, which is historically known as the Maccabean Revolt. Revolt. Here it is. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. Okay? And see, him mentioning Judas was that it was a thing of man. It was a thing of man. Okay? The Maccabean Revolt. Alright? And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. And see, the counsel and work of men, such as Catholicism, because, what does it say in Matthew chapter 16? Hold your place here. Let's go there. Hold your place. Matthew chapter 16. What does our Lord say of Satan? Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men flesh. Because you've got to remember the curse in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. Satan, the serpent, Satan, was cursed to go on the earth and to eat dust all the days of his life. And man is dust. 
okay? And Gamaliel, Gamaliel, right here. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or if this work be of men, it will come to naught. And look what it came to. But see, look at the denominations out there. I, I don't care where they started. I really don't. I don't care where they started from. I don't. What are they right now? Jesuit. The Jesuit. Is every single Baptist the Jesuit? Is that what you're saying? No. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But look in the totality of what the denominations are today. Do you get the point? Look, look at this. This is all stuff of men. Loosely based off of scriptural standards. But deviate with the teachings of men. All of these, by the way, are Trinitarian too. <laughs> None of these, with the exception of the Westminster, Westminster, give uh, credence to rightly dividing appropriately. Okay, with the exception of the Westminster Confession of Faith. Okay, okay, with that exception, they don't get too deep, uh, deeply into rightly dividing. But they at least give a little credence to it. Okay? But that's all men. And those denominations have been around for a couple hundred years. But they're going to come to nothing. Is Christ divided? It's going to come to nothing. All these ites, the Campbellites, the Ruckmanites, the Denlingerites, whatever ites you want to call it. It's going to come to nothing. And when lost people see the behaviors of these people who are taken with the teachings of men, hence they come with, you're taking the word of God too seriously. Hence, people who are following the teachings of men are making the faith that was once delivered onto the saints to look abhorrent. Again, a perfect example of that is David Wood. Okay? David Wood. Perfect example of it. Because, to be honest with you, no, I, I, don't, I don't believe you can take the Word of God too seriously. If you are truly saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, this, this is your lifeline. This is your only physical link to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. That's it. The scriptures. This is what you got. The sword of the spirit. Okay? God lives within you, but something physical, here it is. Okay? Here it is. And if God is in you, number one, he's going to guide you into all truth. Number two, you're going to rightly divide the word of truth. And hence, when God says something to you in scripture, you're going to take it seriously, boy. You see what I'm saying? Let's continue. Verse 39. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And it's strange and ironic because what did the Pharisees do because of why they obeyed men instead of God? They fought against God when he was here on earth offering them the kingdom of heaven. See, a Pharisee is someone who takes the tradition of men and elevate them above what God has said. You could add the Talmud, which I don't have a copy of. You could add the Talmud with, along with this stuff. See what I'm saying? Verse 40. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, 
they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Let's read verse 41. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were accounted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Why is that? We ought to obey God rather than men. I've heard of these, uh, some of these Baptists and Charismatics and stuff like that. They've had their preaching credentials revoked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, now, now go to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 7. Okay? Now you're, you're going to see something here. Okay? I'm going to see something here, which we're going to explain here in a moment. But, Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23 is describing the spiritual climate right before the redemption of the purchased possession, going into the time of Jacob's trouble. This is the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble is in Matthew chapter 24, what our Lord is talking about. It has nothing to do for us today of the church of the living God. But you Christians, you definitely are going to be going through the Great Tribulation. Those of us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, we're being redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And Matthew chapter 25 is talking about the climate after. Okay? But, Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 7. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. A scribe is what? Someone who writes down words. Okay? All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Now that, that could be a puzzling thing. It's like, well, wait a minute. You, anybody, you read the scriptures and Jesus openly condemned the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, within the same cha chapter, right? But he's like, whatever they say for you to do, do, but don't, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Remember how we said that Catholics, yes, Catholics profess that Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Catholics profess being born again. Yes, they do. Catholics profess a six-day creation. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They're just wrong in every, on the major doctrines. Okay? They're wrong on the major doctrines. All right? See, they base what they do off of some truth and then they go off in all these deadly heretical areas based off of things of the flesh because they serve Satan, see? Okay? But see, for this, at this time, we have to remember, you have to remember, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Hold your place here and go to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Okay? Romans chapter 3. Come on. Romans chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. At this time, go back to Matthew chapter 23. At this time, okay, the true worship of the true God, the true scriptures were in the possession and the custodial care of who? The Jews, the Hebrews, which Mark the messenger is not. Okay? But it was committed unto the Jews, the Hebrews. The chosen line taken from Shem of the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? So they had the true words of God, the scriptures. And in the synagogues, they read the true words of God. Okay? They spake the truth, but they didn't walk 
their talk. And not only that, they added a whole lot more onto what was required. A whole lot more. Okay? Let's continue. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Like all the penance of Catholicism. Catholicism was never right. Catholicism at its inception, at its inception, and you can look this up historically, at its inception, preaching one God comprised of three people, three persons, heresy. Okay, but see, they based what they did, their facade was based off of factual scriptural truth. Okay, remember, Catholics, <laughs> Lutherans, Presbyterians, Baptists, Calvinists, Church of England, they're all Christians, based off of true things, but they go off in crazy directions. Because of what? The precepts of men. Man, flesh got involved. You see. And when flesh gets involved and you come up with all this crazy stuff, and the lost people see that, you're taking the word of God too seriously. When in reality, they're following the, the practices of men. Let's continue. Verse 5. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. I, I was baptized. I've been confirmed. I've been to confession. I had the Mass. I go to church every Sunday. Yes. I read my Bible every day. Yeah. <laughs> I got the piece of paper on my wall. Yeah. Yeah. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Gotta be in church every Sunday before the doors open. Okay? <laughs> they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogue and greetings in the markets and to be called of men rabbi, rabbi. Or to be called of men, uh, doctor, please. Or that's pastor. Or reverend. <laughs> uh, being a pastor is a position, not a title. Okay, it's a It's it's not a title. Okay, it's a a position that the Lord, you know, like a shepherd. Okay. We've talked about that before. It's not a title that you ascribe to your name. Okay? All right? <laughs> I've talked to some of these Christians who are like, uh, call me doctor. I'm not sick. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm not sick. I have the cure. I have the cure. Okay? You're sick. I'm presenting to you the cure. Oh, well, I've been to cemetery school of the Jesuits. I got this. Who are you to talk to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, now go to Mark chapter 7. Go to Mark chapter 7. Our Lord really nails this on the head here in Mark chapter 7. And hence, think of Catholicism with all their nonsensical uh, tradition. And tradition trumps scripture every time to the Catholic. Think of the Lutherans. I, I've made the mistake of calling a Lutheran pastor who wears a dog collar a Jesuit. And the guy, he got offended. It's like, I, I'm not a Jesuit. I haven't been to any Jesuits university. It's like, you know what a Jesuit is? It's like, yeah, I do. And he looked at me like he didn't approve. And then he's in a, he's in, uh, he's in uh, <laughs> a sect of man, okay? But he disapproved of that, you know. But there again, look at the Jesuits with the little dog collar, okay? 
sect of man, Church of England, sect of man, uh, Calvinism, the Baptists, this, the 1689, like I said, based off of Calvinism, and the Westminster Confession of Faith. Out of all of these, the one that at least attempts, at least attempts to give credence to the scripture is the Westminster uh, Confession of Faith. I'm not recommending it. I've had people who uh, broke fellowship with me who I doubted in the first place because I, you know, disagree with the Westminster Confession of Faith. But out of all these teachings of men, one that comes at least attempts is the Westminster Confession of Faith. Okay? But then again, look at what that has become today. Look at the Presbyterians. The Presbyterians who sport the, the uh, sodomite rainbow and uh, women uh, preachers and stuff. I mean, it's a... See, that's what man does. That's what man has done. It's what devil has... The devil, Satan, has done through man. Okay? Mark chapter 7, verses 1 and verse 13. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they washed their hands off, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Okay? And this, uh, they, they do that in uh, at Passover, Pesach, you know, uh, in restaurants, the rabbi will come in, they'll pour salt water all over things and they'll do all this kind of tradition of men okay traditions of men traditions of the elders let's keep reading and when they come from the market except they wash they eat not and many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots brazen vessels and of tables which they still practice today and our lord in the book of isaiah uh, addresses this kind of conduct about these people is like, don't come near to me. I am holier than thou. Unclean, unclean. Okay. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? Why, why are you so rogue and not going with the tradition of men? Why are you so rogue? Huh? Why, why are you going rogue? Why aren't you doing what we have always done? Like it has always been. Like we have always known. Why are you going rogue? You're taking the word of God way too seriously. He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah, Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. Hold your place here. Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. This is what our Lord is talking about. Isaiah chapter 29. Okay? Isaiah chapter 29. <clears throat> Verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. David Wood, that's all i got to say. Okay? <laughs> and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Why? Because they have chosen the precepts of men. Back to Mark chapter 7. Okay? Picking up at verse 9. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. The Christian Sabbath, mandatory Sunday worship, 
find it for me. We there there will be a video in the description box where we we talk about the Christian Sabbath. Okay, tithing, another one. Okay, tithing is not a requirement today. Why? Because there is no building that we are to worship in. Uh, God lives within you. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost if you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. See, building worship, church building worship comes from these guys but stems down to all of this. Okay? For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother. And whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, that is to say, a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffered no him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things ye do ye. For example, uh, these people who are taught tithing in their church buildings, okay? They got this, they're 10%. That's what God requires. You go above, then you're actually giving. Heresy, okay? But you got your tithe thing, and your mother or your father, your father or mother, they need to the help. But you're like, I, I can't because that's what God requires. Making the word of God of no effect by your own tradition. My my mother, my father, they're sick, and I should go visit him, but it's on Sunday, okay? But I, I got to go to church. I got to be to church every time the do doors are open, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, um, I'm, off, I'm off of meat for Lent. Uh, I'm not eating certain things because of a prescribed time. Uh, the time of Lent. Traditions of men. And see, when people who, who want to go after God, but see, they don't want to truly go after God. How many people out there will feel that they are serving God? You know, somebody comes along with a $100,000 piece of paper on their wall and say, hey, push a peanut out, up a mountain and they'll make you right with God they'll do it why because it's something that they're doing themselves see that's why so many people turn to religion because there, there are many people out there who will prescribe for you do this 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 and this and they'll make you right with God and you'll be a Christian The non-denominational people are the worst at this. They really are. They, they purport not to be a denomination, but yet they are a denomination. And they say anything goes. Any Bible will do. Do whatever you want to do. Okay? And doing whatever you want to do, that will make you right with God. Because God loves you. But then someone from the Church of the Living God who is truly saved comes to expose their her heretical doctrines. Oh boy. Okay? Oh boy. You see, dear brethren, like we've talked about it before, and uh, go back to Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. Okay? Isaiah chapter 28. We've talked about this before. Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 on to verse 13. We've had, I've expounded this onto you many times before. We're going to go over it again. Okay? Verses 9 on to verse 13. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk, and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. People who are drawn from the breast, who are ready for uh, deeper spiritual things, who depend upon the Word of God, who believe the Word of God, who take it seriously. Okay? 
who take this seriously? That's what the first part of this, the, uh, the context that we're looking at, verses 9 and verse 13, are for those who truly take the word of God seriously, who take God and his word seriously. But then the contrast is, to whom he said, this is my rest. This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. Why? But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. What is this talking about? What is this talking about? What? Wow. <laughs> wow. I opened right to it. <laughs> well, no, I didn't. <laughs> it's John chapter 5, verses 39 and 40. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. See, those that go to the cemetery schools and are taught, you know, yea hath God said, textual criticism. It's just a career. It's just a job. Reading the scripture mechanically? Just to find some good thing and not actually taking it seriously? Not believing that God actually wrote this? But, well, man wrote this. This is man's word, actually. But, hey, not, you're looking at it as a mechanical thing. Not life-giving. Hence the Pharisees. They, they professed. Hey, they confessed angel and spirit when God himself stood before them, but yet they didn't believe it. Why? Because they didn't believe what God said and they didn't take it seriously. They took it seriously to the point to make themselves look good because it was a thing of promotion, self-advancement, so that they could say, well, I've done this. You know the, the, the parable between the tax collector and the Pharisee? Okay? The publican and the Pharisee? I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all. I'm not like this publican. And the publican. God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And see again, I'm telling you, lost people, they see men religious people following the precepts of men and calling it Christianity the faith that was once delivered on to the saints with all these extra added things you, you take the word of God too seriously you're in a cult you're a Christian extremist see how that works you see how the devil has done all he can, had, had all he can from Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth? See what he has done to make the faith that was once delivered unto the saints odious unto everybody? How does he do that? Through religion. And we know what true religion is. Because it's told that we're told in Scripture, but not according to these guys. See, sex like this, sex of the devil, sex, S E C T S of the devil, Satan's church. They want to bring people back under the law, but not under the law of scripture under their own laws that they make. Okay? Go to Colossians chapter 2. Go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Search the scriptures whether these things be so. Okay? Colossians chapter 2 verses 18 on to verse 23. I'm going to have a little expository here, just a little, okay? Colossians chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 23. 
Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. And the worshiping of angels, voluntary humility? Well, my, my pastor says I got to do it, or the Jesuit priest says I got to do it. Worshiping of angels? Uh, uh, on that, of course, Second Corinthians chapter 11. <laughs> of course, Second Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves, themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Ooh, an angel of light. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Ministers of righteousness. This is not relegated to the religious realm. Okay, uh, Doctors, lawyers, ministers of righteousness. It's not relegated to that, but we're talking about religious things. Okay, Look at the uh, Catholic priests. Look at the um, NIFB uh, preachers. Okay. Look at the guys who put on their Sunday best. Look at the Sam Gipps. Okay. Look at them. Ministers of righteousness. You know, guys like this. Calvinists, you know, who worship mind. Oh, I'm elected. You're not. Okay. Calvinistic Baptists, Lutherans, Catholic Light, the Church of England. Yeah, no marvel. And and see here in verse eighteen in Colossians chapter two, a voluntary humility. Well, the Jesuit priest says if I do this, I'll be right with God. So hey, I'll do what he says. Worshiping angels, an angel of light, Satan, and his ministers. Mm. Also in First Corinthians, uh, excuse me, in uh, Galatians chapter one. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 10, okay? I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called for you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. You're hearing me say it. Catholics, Lutherans, Church of England, Presbyterians, Baptists, and of course, Calvinists. Okay? Today, they pervert the gospel of Christ. Do every single one of them? Like do all Baptists? No. Uh, if you're a Calvinist, yes, you do pervert the gospel of Christ. Why? Because you preach elect and not elect. You're a Catholic, you're, you're a Satanist. You're a Jesuit. Church of England? <laughs> the English division of Roman Catholicism? Lutheranism? Catholic light? Martin Luther wanted the German Catholic Church. Okay? But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that, which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. I've been confirmed. I've been baptized. I had mass. Okay? 
<laughs> I'm elect, not elect. Okay? Or we're, we're uh, Baptist raised or whatever that saying is. Okay? <laughs> Come on, people. And also now 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 8. All right? Verses 1 on to verse 3. Now as touching things offered unto idols. This is talking about a statue. Okay, but offering things onto idols is not relegated just to a marionette statue. Be aware of that. Okay? It's not relegated to just that. Okay? We know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. Oh, and them Calvinists are atrocious for that. I'm elect. You're not elect. I've been to the Master's Cemetery School. Oh, I've been to Fordham <laughs> Jesuit University. They rub, they rub their education in your face. Knowledge puffeth up. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. And see, these Calvinists, a lot of these Calvinists, who worship the brain, worship the mind. Okay? They worship themselves. They are, John MacArthur, he is his own God, he is his own standard. Okay? David Wood, he, come on, guys, he is his own standard. Okay? Some of the Baptists, they are their own sta standard. Why? Because they worship the mind. Like Mary Baker Eddy. There's another one for you. Messiah. Uh, mind is Messiah. Okay. Alright. And also to let's look at some more examples of this. Uh, read uh, uh, Colossians chapter 2 verse 18 again. Let no man beguile you, beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he had not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Go to John chapter 7. John chapter 7. And here, th this, this is right here, John chapter 7 verses 14 and 15. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? How do you know? Have you been to college? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which they hath, which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. They were saying this of God the Father. Who wrote the scriptures which they purported to believe in but really didn't if they did they wouldn't have crucified the Lord Jesus Christ okay another one John chapter 9 John chapter 9 John chapter 9 verses 26 on to verse 34 then said they to him again now this was the guy whose eyes were made open Okay, the Lord opened up his eyes and he was brought to the Pharisees and stuff like that and they, they asked him, it's like, well, how did he open your eyes? And he tells them, okay? And they bring the guy, the, the guy's father and mother and they're like, yeah, his, his eyes were made or he was blind. He was born blind, now he sees. Ask him, he'll tell you, okay? He already tells them once. We're picking up at the second time, okay? Check this out. John chapter 9, verses 26 on to verse 34. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I, I have told you already. I told you already. And ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Kind of a poke at him. Look at what their response. Look at how they respond. I, look, I, I already told you. What? You, what? Did I stutter? You didn't hear me? Look how they responded. 
Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple. But we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. Fulfilling scripture. They knew that Jesus came from Nazareth, right? But as for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. They knew that, you know, that he was from Nazareth, right? But from where Jesus, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? They knew where the flesh came from. They didn't know who was in that flesh. Hence, fulfillment of Scripture. They didn't know that God was manifest in the flesh. They didn't know that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh right before them. They only saw flesh. They knew where the flesh came from, but who was in that flesh? They, they didn't know. Hence, fulfilling Scripture. It's like, well, we know where Jesus came from. Nazareth. But the scriptures say, when he comes, we won't know from where he is. See, it wasn't talking about the fleshly thing. It was talking about the spiritual thing. The spiritual thing. They didn't know that God the Father was standing right in front of them. See, they read the scriptures. But they didn't believe it. Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 30. The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from whence he is? And yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. Kind of saying what Gamaliel would say later on. If this counsel of work be of men, it will come to naught. Naught, excuse me. But, okay. Check this out. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Oh, have you run into that one brother, sister? Especially when talking with a, a Christian pastor at a building. Wouldn't even hear you. Wouldn't even hear. I, I've been to a seminar. It's like, okay, fine, dude. Throw the track at his feet. It's like, okay, fine. You, you, you go ahead and you wipe your nose with that uh, degree you got on your wall, buddy. You don't know who God is. You know who the little G God of this world is, but you don't know who God is. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, of course, while we're on this, while we're, while we're on this rabbit trail, Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, we want verses 8 on to verse 16. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of, of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There again, Another exclusive statement showing the exclusivity, the exclusive exclusivity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Well, well, how do we come to Jesus Christ? Broken and contrite and in fear of Him, call upon His name. And He will fill you with the Holy Ghost. And He will guide you into all truth. And He will guide you unto people who speak the truth, who teach the truth of Scripture, who rightly divide the word of truth. Who feed the flock of God. Not feed off of them. But feed them. Okay? Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. And perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. According to whose standard? Unlearned and ignorant. 
in the ways of the Pharisees, in the ways of the traditions of men. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Hence it is today. I, 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 I can testify of this. You get in front of some of these Jesuit trained cemeterian Christian pastors and you start talking to them. You whip out the sword of the spirit. You'll see it. You'll see it. Their countenance, sometimes even their visage, will change right in front of you. When, you start, when the Holy Ghost starts speaking the truth through you from the Scriptures, oh, then the, this guy's truly saved. He's been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. And of course, read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 on to verse 29. Again, okay, you do that on your own time. But see, there it is again. The esoteric and esoteric, the in crowd, the elitist, you know, the elect and the non elect, exoteric thing. Okay? See, when you're trained of men, when you're trained of men, and you have the traditions of man as your standard, as how you ought to follow Jesus, the traditions of men tell you how to interpret Scripture. Yeah, right. Not right. And when you have the traditions of men which tell people how to interpret scripture or their Bibles, right? The lost person sees that lunacy. It's like you're a Christian extremist. You're in a cult. You're, you're taking the word of God too seriously. When you are truly saved, born again, and converted, there is no such a thing as taking the word of God too seriously. Why? Because the spirit of truth, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that spirit. He will guide you into all truth. You will be dispensational. You will rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? You will. And that will clear up so many things. Because like I said, a lot of the traditions of men want to take things from the Old Testament and make them viable for today. Okay? Okay? Let's continue in Colossians chapter 2, verse 19. And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, and what is that? I'll hold your place here. With the increase of God? Huh? What is that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 again? 1 Corinthians chapter 2? Or 1 Corinthians... Chapter 3, excuse me. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men, fleshly men, adhering to the doctrines and precepts of men, making those of the lost world who see that say that you are uh, taking the word of God too seriously, hence making faith that was once delivered unto the saints the scriptures itself look abhorrent unto the lost making the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition <laughs> for while one saith I am of Paul and another I am of Apollos are ye not carnal fleshly who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom ye believe even as the Lord gave to every man I have planted Apollos water. But God gave the increase. If this counsel or work be of men, it will come to naught. And God will give the increase. Okay? But looking at verse 19 again, and not holding the head, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered 
and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. What is this talking about? Oh, Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. Verses 21 on to verse 22. I have not sent these, these prophets. Yet they ran. I have not spoken to them. Yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then should they have turned them from their evil way and from their evil doings. If they had stood in the counsel of the Lord and not in the counsel of men. See, this kind of stuff makes people say, well, you're going to extremes. Yes, this is extreme stuff. Why? Because this, these are the precepts and doctrines of men, not of Scripture. Oh, very loosely based off of Scripture, yes, but not Scripture. Okay? And plus, again, the thing about going to extremes, extremes, this is extremity. This is extremity. That is extremity. And when someone of the church of the living God comes to a false convert and tells them the truth of scripture, what do they do? They want to associate you with one of these, don't they? And why is that? Because those people who do that and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increases with the increase of God, these Christians being constantly told, God loves you. <laughs> what is that? First John chapter 2? Of course we had to come here. Of course. Of course. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. We want verses 18 on to verse 21 again. The falling away, brethren. This is talking about the falling away. And you need to remember that. We are in the falling away. Falling away has been happening for a, quite a while, but it's, it's getting more pronounced. It's getting worse every day. This is the falling away. 1 John 2, verses 18 on verse 21. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. And now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. They had, they started, they based what they do off of truth. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. Is Christ divided? No. Then what do you call all that? Man, flesh. And because the world sees that, you're going to extremes. You're taking the word of God too seriously. Now, for if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye, the distinction, those of you who are truly saved, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lies of the truth. And this, verse 20, an unction from the Holy One. It's talking about the seal of the Holy Ghost. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father that dwells within you, and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? Now back to Colossians chapter 3. Let's read verses 20 on to verse 23. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? <laughs> Touch not. Taste not. Handle not. Which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. 
which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom in will worship, worshiping your own will. Oh, worshiping your own will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, therefore I am. If you can uh, think it, you can achieve it. If you can conceive it, you can achieve it. Worshiping your own will. Worshiping yourself. Mm. Worshiping your own self. That, that sounds very, very familiar. Mm. Which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship and humility. And neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Boy, that, that sounds really familiar, doesn't it? Go, go to Galatians chapter 4. Go to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, verses 8 on to verse 11. Okay? How be it then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods? Devils. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, known of God how? Through a relationship, because you came to him on his terms, not your own. See, someone who boots the door out of the way and shouts through the crack, they're going to, they're trying to go to the, uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ on their own terms, their own works. What they do. Okay? Not according to God's standard, but one that they conceive of their own. See, they worship their minds. They worship themselves. Which have indeed, which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom and will worship. You are because you say you are, huh? And humility. Yeah. And neglecting of the body. Not to any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Let's continue in Galatians 4. But now after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Why? Because it makes you look good. It makes you feel good. Ye observe days and months and times and years. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Okay? And Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 and 3. O foolish Galatians, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. For someone to behave foolishly, you are behaving as though you say in your heart there is no God. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? How? By the way he lived and walked his talk. He lived, Romans 12, 1 through 2. Okay? This only would I learn of you. Received ye the capital S spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? And why go after the flesh? Because it makes you feel good. And look at the verse 23 again. Okay? Why do you want to go back under the rudiments of the world? Why, do you, why would someone want to follow the precepts of men? Why? Which things have indeed a shoe of wisdom in will worship. Worshiping your own will. What is that talking about? Do you not know already? Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. You want to see will worship for you, buddy? Here's your will worship for you. Isaiah 14. We had to come here. Verses what? 12 verse 15. Sect appears in the scriptures five times. The sect of the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the sect of the Nazarene. Is Christ divided? Unfortunately, apparently, today, yes. But is that the truth? 
will worship. Verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the side to the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Will worship. I will. I will. I will. Which does have a, what, what does it say in verse 23? Which things have indeed a shoe of will, wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body? Uh, go, go now to Genesis. Genesis chapter 11. All the way in the beginning. Genesis chapter 11. Let's think about will worship. Okay. What happens when man gets together. Man gets together. Like Catholicism is trying to bring everybody together. What happens? Genesis chapter 11 verses 1 and verse 9. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Let us make us a name. This is what happens when man gets together. Saved man who has the Lord within them, that's true fellowship. But what happens when men get together? They want to build themselves temples that reach unto heaven to make a name for themselves. Why do people, brethren, why do people ascribe themselves to all these denominations and follow their dictates rather than scripture? I will be like the Most High. Will worship. Worshiping of their own will. Worshiping of themselves. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Dear friends, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta fess up to yourself. Who is the idol that you are actually worshiping? Who? Not what? Who? Your little marionette statue that you're worshiping? You're worshiping Satan. Yes, you are. But see, Satan, as we read in Isaiah 14, I will, I will. So when you worship yourself, your own will, you are doing the works of your father, Satan. And, and let's keep reading here. Verse 5, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. And hence comes along the religion of Joel Osteen. The Secret. And his blasphemous book, I Am. The power of I am. This is the religion. Right here. This is the religion of Joel Osteen. This is metaphysical mind science. If you can uh, conceive it. You can achieve it. Uh, there are even quotes from Tony Robbins in here. Okay. This. And Christian science. Mind science. And. Wouldn't you know the devil. Who's answering some of these prayers? That will be in the description box for you. And you might say, well, some of these things that these people think of comes to pass. 
Well, the devil to put on the facade that he's, you know, the actual Christ. The devil answers prayers too. See, God says, whatever these people imagine, they can achieve. So then, who is going to help them to achieve these things? They built a, they were building ziggurats, they were called. But they were building them towers to reach on to heaven, to make a name for themselves. They follow the precepts of man. The precepts of man. Why? To make a name for themselves. That they can glory in their own flesh. The I will. And then, when, like I told you, the lost world sees that. And hence, the church of God gets a bad rap because of them. Because of them, the lost world says, those people take the Bible way too seriously. I don't want to be any... That's why I'm not a Christian. Do you understand? Hmm. Verse 7. Go to, let us go down, and they're confound. Confound their language, that they may, may not understand one another's speech. And the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore the name of it is the name of it therefore is the name of it called Babel or Babel. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from the, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. There's your will worship right there. You make yourself into gods. And the lost world sees this. You're going to extremes that God never intended. In a, in a sense, when someone says that, what are they basing that off of? Generally this. But then again, you got those who are parts of this. You got those who belong to things like this. Even reading, using the scriptures, because it's the best translation, right? And then they will use that exact argument of the lost people. You're going to extremes. Because they themselves are lost. Because they, they affix themselves to a denomination, a religion. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Calvinist. <laughs> I'm a Charismatic. <laughs> I am of Breaker. I am of Kim. I am of Denlinger. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta be aware of this, because that kind of thing is what is being magnified right now, and it's getting worse. Why aren't these people shunning people making idols out of themselves, making them idols? Why aren't you? Why aren't these people speaking up about that? Huh? Why? Because they love it. They revel in it. They revel in it. They revel in it, man. Prove me, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Again, uh, another example I can think of. That David Wood guy who, who wore that dress. Yeah, I'm beating that to death. That Anybody, he never repented of it. And, as in some of the comment sections, uh, people actually defend that guy. And see, because they worship their own will and go to these extremes that are outside of Scripture, lost people, you're, you're too extreme. You're taking it too seriously. And the false convert, who's part of one of those. When you are the Church of the Living God, get a chance. My best friend has, has experience with this. I have experience with this. You're going to extremes that God would never have us to. 
take seriously his word and do what it says? Not for salvation, but to live by, to be an example unto you lost people. Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Go back there. Second Corinthians chapter eleven. <laughs> you know what you know what it is, what the whole thing could be summed up? Uh, uh, John chapter seven. <laughs> John chapter seven. <laughs> John chapter 7, what was that? Uh, uh, what, or no, what, what, what was that? Uh, uh, never mind, never mind. But uh, where it says, how can ye believe? How can ye believe? Those of you, uh, that's John chapter 12, excuse me. John chapter 12, verse 43. John chapter 12, verse 40, 43. For they love the praises of men more than the praises of God. Okay, one second. Yes. They love the praises of men because you wear your suit. You do what your priest subscribes to you to, you to do. You do what the Baptist confession says. They love the praises of men more than the praises of God. And in John chapter 5, verse 44, How can ye believe? which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verses 16, on to verse 30 now. Then we'll be done. I say again, let no man think me a fool. For otherwise yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly, in this confident boasting. Why? Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly. Seeing ye yourselves are wise, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Huh? Ye suffer fools who say in their heart there is no God. But yet come to you with the facade, the outward adornment of religion, and give you all kinds of stuff. These, this is written by men. This was written by God. For ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face, because you know better, right? <laughs> I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak, albeit wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. <laughs> I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, and deaths off. How many of these hotshot preachers go through even a tenth of what Paul has already described? How many? How many? Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. But God loves you. God wants the best for you. God would never want you to go through any suffering for his name's sake. Try to tell that to the Apostle Paul. And then you've got these bozos in the Christian church buildings preaching the opposite of this. Or, or what are they actually saying? That you might suffer by preaching this uh, false love gospel? And what are they doing? They're conditioning their congregants to watch out for those of us at the Church of the Living God. We're going to rub them wrong by saying, uh, God is, God's love is not for you if you don't come to Him on His terms. Okay? God doesn't love everybody. Okay? God does not love everybody. Okay? He does not. So the congregants are being prepared for those who might actually tell them the truth. 
Roll that around in your head for a little while, huh? Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils of in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false In weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is offended, and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory in the things which concern mine infirmities. And then look right, right across the the page verses uh, in uh, Second Corinthians 12 verses 7 on to verse 11 Paul who had a pride problem the Holy Ghost warned him three times to not go to Jerusalem tw two or three times he was warned hey you better not go you know problems are waiting for you I think it was three times but Paul was warned not to go to Jerusalem but he went anyway. He had a pride problem. Okay? Unless I should be exalted above measure through the, the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for me. For my strength is made perfect in Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, <laughs> in, in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Why? Because then you are dependent on Christ. If you haven't figured it out already, dear friend, all this of man, all these precepts and doctrines of men, what do they teach? Self-sufficiency. I will. I will. You, you might be saying something about the Baptist Confession of Faith of 1689. Okay? See that? You can buy this. Off of Amazon, or if you have to, Christian book. Okay? You can. Check it out. This is Calvinist. This is Calvinism. Okay? Elder This is Calvinism. This also has Calvinistic tendencies as well. Like I said, I'm not recommending it. But out of all this, out of all of this, the Westminster Confession of Faith, that is the one that at least attempts. I don't recommend it. I don't. Okay? I don't. I don't. Not at all. Okay? Not at all. But at least they attempt. All these others, it's all I will. I will. All, all of this leads to what? Religious people glorying in their own flesh. Verse uh, 10, again, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I am become a fool in glorying. You have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you. For nothing I am behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. Though I be nothing. Christ Dependence. See, the Holy Ghost who will guide you into all truth will guide you onto the scriptures, the authorized version. And the Holy Ghost within you will guide you into all truth. That will mean you will become dispensational. You will rightly divide the word of truth. Because there are things within scripture, 
unless you rightly divide the word of truth, you cannot make sense of. You cannot uh, reconcile unless you rightly divide the word of truth like you're commanded to. Okay? But see, with this as your standard, you are Christ dependent. With the words of men, which have commentary on the word of God at the best, when you have these, the works of men, this every single time. Look, look, hey, you lost people, you atheists out there, you know, look at them today. And because of what, the, because of this, you lost people will say that you take that book a little too seriously. Look at y'all. When this, especially today, when this does not represent the church of the living God. No, it doesn't. That Again, you Baptists out there, you go ahead and bite my head off. I don't care. The 1689, this is Calvinism. This is Calvinism. Okay? Too serious? There is no such thing as taking the word of God too seriously. Why? Because if you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, God dwelling within you will lead you and guide you into all truth. You will rightly divide the word of truth and you will seek to live your life according to the dictates of scripture. The ones that take, this, uh, take themselves too seriously are these guys. And because of what these guys have done, You wrongly conceive that the church of the living God takes what God said way too seriously. So, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this if you do. I hope, uh, I hope this helps. I hope this made sense to some of you. Um, this, like I said, this is an addendum to the previous video. Technically a part two, you could say, but yeah, like I said, I wanted, I wanted to on Monday to address what we have already addressed, but uh, as you could see, that would have been four hours. And I'm not doing that. <laughs> so hopefully this will be helpful to you. Hopefully this will clear some things up for you. Okay. The religion that those things ta uh, teach you or talk about is not the religion found in scripture. It isn't. That, whoop, whoop, this, dear brethren, dear friends, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, how'd that sound for you, huh? <laughs> this, dear friends, is not this. Okay? So, thank you so much for watching this. If you do, I'm going to get this uploaded. Please, brethren, keep us in your prayers. We need it. We are Christ dependent. There is nothing that we can do of our own selves to do anything. All we can do is trust on our Lord Jesus Christ. We are Christ dependent. Thank you. Love you. Thank you, brethren. And pray for one another, too. We will see you in the next video.